So you know what happens when a bank's not performing? We just rename it in 2024. NY Community Bank has been renamed Flagstar Financial because you know, if you have 100% updates, it's a fantastic bank. Don't talk about the $2 billion in losses that's on their books right now. Don't talk about how this company basically kicked off after FRC and SVB, one of the great bank runs of our time. It's just everything's fine, right? 100% update in the stock. Perfect candle, guys. This is just a fantastic stock. It has no downside potential. They'll say, you know, like if any of you have watched The Big Short, when Jerry Vanette's talking to Mark about, oh, about what do banks do when they don't have a performing asset, they just don't sweep it under the books. They just repackage it and give it a new name. And guess what? It's diversified. So guess what? This is the bank whitewashing version of diversification, just this time for stocks. Again, this company's worth $4 billion on capitalization as it currently sits at $10.96, sorry, $10.61 a share. However, if you guys jump over to Seeking Alpha, you will clearly see that they actually have the trend and the data for FLG. I gotta love the name, Flagstar Financial. If it wasn't a flag, right? Like they're trying to just put this thing in front of your face and basically say there's a gigantic red flag, but no one's really gonna be looking at it because they're not gonna have all the technical data as trading platforms have basically scrubbed it. We'll see if different trading platforms, how they represent it, but it's gonna be very, very interesting. Throw it in the comment section below. If you look at FLG, does it show you the entire trading history on your platform or is it just showing you similarly just that one candle tick? I'm really curious to see what you guys have in store. But New York Community Bank will be changing its ticker FLG from NYCB. That occurred today because I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, NYCB. Did we have a bank run or something? Because I've been telling you guys on this channel about NYCB being the one to watch. They have the most turmoil. Their earnings were absolute horrendous. So they just whitewashed it, right? They just changed the name, changed everything because, you know, everything's fine. But again, um, bank multifamily loans at default risk Kyra 990%, right? Near Community Bank, again, we're not gonna call FLG. We're gonna keep calling it NYCB on this channel because I need to drill that into everyone's head of the history of this bank. They basically said Long Island based lender saved from the brink of collapse in March, uh, reported a 990% surge in loans with outsized default risk, making $1.5 billion in the corresponding non-accuracy category in the third quarter. So again, you got a company that's currently trading at $4 billion market cap, and they have a potential loss of 1.5 billion, some estimated up to be north of $2 billion. But question is, if I'm at $4 billion market cap and I take a, let's say, 25% haircut on my assets, am I worth still that? This company should not be worth what it is. This thing should be a penny stock. Again, remember what they did also is a reverse split. So let's see, you collapse completely. If you then reverse split to basically whitewash it, that doesn't work. We can't get your enthusiasm to go up. As you guys can see with this, they have basically ever since they fell down to $8.19 a share. This thing was trading around $3 when it was doing its reverse split. Then they do the reverse split, magically waff, poof, it all goes back to normal. However, history is not whitewashed. It shows here on the chart. And basically we get $8.19 for the longest time. I was like, it was up, down, up, down, up, down. I was like, this thing ain't gonna go anywhere. And I said on earnings, this could be very, very bad. Earnings, it just went poof, horrible. Let's see, just pull the five days so you can see. You tell me where earnings was, right? Just nice little drop right here. And basically just horrible. So then they get white whitewashed again for this, but that's not the only thing that's going on in the markets of being whitewashed, right? Everyone says treasury markets are fine. Treasury yields resume climb. So if it wasn't bad enough that I told you guys on the weekend deep dive link in the description below, if you want to check that out, I'll actually have it posted at the end of the video as well. We covered all the levels we're going to go over in this video for the S&P. So, you know, if you have to be bull or bear today, obviously you need to be bear, but I am so mad at that dang trade last night. We gapped up on futures crazy. I posted it on X, so make sure you guys follow there as well. And I was trying to short this thing and it just took me for a ride. Yep, yes, I took a loss last night. However, I'll make it back with earnings plays. So make sure you guys are subscribed so those earning plays come out for you. We're gonna be playing Google. We'll go over in this video. So for all those that are subscribed to the channel, you're gonna go to Google Play and an AMD play that'll be at the last five minutes of the video. I wanna give you guys a rundown of what's going on in the world first. But again, 
bonds are not looking like they want to basically give you cheap mortgages. Again, we went over this, that the mortgage rate went right back to 7%. Then I said that when we were at 6% mortgages, that this thing's going right back to 7 and 7.5. Here we come. You may not want to believe it, but then we are going. So jumping to mortgages, right? Instead of being whitewashed like NYCB, we can clearly see the history of mortgages bottoming out at 4.1% on the 20 year. And let's actually go to the 10 because this is gonna determine where you're gonna be. And simply put, the 10 year is climbing, right? They climbed approximately on the week, we're up 1%, but that's not good on necessarily on yields. Yields are supposed to be going down. When the Federal Reserve is cutting rates, expected 25 basis point cut in the coming next week, right? We got the election and then we get the Fed. So November 7th, elections November 5th, we'll be talking about the election, so make sure you guys stay tuned for the rest of this video. But again, yields going up is not a good thing. Yes, they are a little bit red at the time of recording this video, but this is a strong push on yields. This is a strong push on the dollar. The dollar actually made it above the 200 day moving average. So let's just dissect what happened to the dollar. We can clearly see 200 day, 200 weekly bounce hard, consolidate in a coil. Coil blows up blows up above the 50, blows above the 200, holding the nine day moving average. What more bullishness do you want? As the markets think they're gonna go up and also dollar going up, one of these two things has to be lying. I'll give you a sense, dollar, trillion dollar, uh, trillions and trillions of dollars, stock market, six trillion. So you tell me which one's lying. The one that has more money is probably telling you the truth. So again, the bond sector is multiple times bigger than the stock market. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. The inversion of the yield curve remains inverted. So we will not have loop-de-loops on this channel like a certain someone will be saying. And if you followed us long enough, you know exactly what I'm referring to. But my partner would say when we were back here that this thing's gonna be doing loop-de-loops. Subsequently, it did loop-de-loops, and I was very, very irate at that fact. So every time he brings that up after we've uninverted, I want to ream him a new one, but again, not going to do that because I love him. And subsequently, we can also go to the earnings, right? We talked about the earnings play, AMD Alphabet coming out shortly in the next hour after this video goes live. So for all those that tuned in early, Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you missed this play because I will be throwing out a Microsoft Meta play for tomorrow. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And I actually may go over in this video. So make sure you guys are subscribed. We'll see how much time we got on our hands today. But AMD Alphabet are gonna be the two that I'm gonna be looking for plays. But as promised, a little bit of election update. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Absenteeism of voting update. We got 1.4 million people have voted in Pennsylvania. This is approximately 56,000 more for the Democrats and 46,000 more than previously. So big turnout from the Republicans. This has traditionally been a Democrat led piece of the election. So it's gonna be very, very interesting to see turnout. Also, we can see voter registration up from 10 28th, GOP up 36,000, Democrats up 19,000. So let's see, again, Pennsylvania was win 100,000 margin. So again, this could be very, very interesting. We also seen uh, the previous vote cast, right? How much we got there. So again, we'll keep you guys updated of that. And just briefly, top battleground states still remaining in for Orange Man as we are basically teetering kind of how polls are coming in. But the main thing is the national average still leading by a couple points. So that is massive, right? That is massive, massive, massive for the election. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. Massive volatility expected. But what we could do to mitigate some of that volatility is take a look at our beautiful friend, Google, right? We talked about Google extensively on this channel and we can jump over right here to it. So subsequently, I like Google where it is for a bullish play. We also covered on the weekend deep dive that the expectations were primarily bullish for Google, bearish for AMD. So with Google, we're looking to basically tackle above this price action of 170. That's where we're gonna be targeting our play. So let's jump over to the taste of trade and go over the position. So so looking at Google right here, we have the option chain for November 1st. Again, we're gonna be doing the expiry for the end of the week. Four days out, so this is gonna be not as crazy, but we could expect massive earnings push, and we do wanna play this position again safe. 170 was that historical number that we talked about as a region of safe bet. That is currently right where Google's sitting at, so we're gonna try going a little bit further. We're gonna try for that 172, 175 play, so we can, we're gonna buy the 172, and then we're gonna sell the 177. That would be an expected $7 move on Google, so approximately a 5%. That is standard 
for any of these bigger cap stocks. And I'd be looking to possibly buy this option as we're going into the play because again, you're gonna get more momentum from Google as it subsequently keeps running because you have four days of expansion. Now, let's say you don't wanna put up $169 to make $331 of profit. We're gonna basically shrink this down to 175, 172.50. You're selling the 175, buying the 172.50. The reason we do this is because we wanna limit the amount of capital that we have to put up. And subsequently, $93, a lot of people have that in their accounts to make $157. That is personally what I would be doing just because it's a safer bet. You could actually make it uh, do the same spread we talked about recently with uh, about $200, but you're only gonna make $300 because you're getting closer to that certainty point. So a little bit more risk, 172, you could be a little bit of a baller and go out to a 175, 177 play. That's $76 for $174, about $20 difference, but your guarantee is not there. Personally, 172.50 to 177.50 would be an area of interest for me. 169 to 331, I may play that depending on how strong Google is looking, where it's positioning, right? If I can get the 175 cheaper in the sense of like, instead of $93, I get it for 80. That's definitely what I'd be looking to necessarily play. As we can see, there's a lot of open interest in this upper region right here with volume and open interest. So make sure you guys keep a eye out for Google on that bullish play. And subsequently, I do wanna point out that we basically, this is the reason that we're playing Google bullish nine to three that's expected to be bullish. We're not putting out so much of bearishness out there because it's simply nine to three, right? So now jumping over to AMD's expectations of seven to 26. This is why we're going to be playing AMD bearish and subsequently going to be doing the same spread there. So let's jump over to the charts real quick on AMD. And we're seeing we're at around that 200 day moving average is where we're looking to basically bang our head, right? So we could be expecting some resistance around 163. It could bang out earnings, but there's still some people expecting uh, it's not one sided completely, right? So if it was just completely like 33 to zero, then I subsequently be looking at basically a maybe I should be playing bullish to counteract trend. Simply put, I want to break this 155 number. It is our previous support. A break of that would result in further downside potential on AMD. And subsequently, I want to take advantage of that possible downside potential. So jumping back over here, we're going to go to AMD and we're going to simply see that again, November 1st spreads and even the options are basically telling you it's going to the downside because there's more movement to the downside being priced in. So subsequently, we want to follow what the bond option market is doing. We said that 155 number is where we want to be positioning at similar to Google right outside that one standard deviation or sorry, one, uh, option chain outside in the money 168 to 332 excellent play here we can subsequently shrink it down 9357 so either way you want to go you got a bullish play you got a bearish play and both cost you about the same amount i probably would do the 93 dollar options for the spread on google and amd just because it gives you number one diversifying what's going to happen you're betting bullish and bearish also so you kind of have diversification on delta how things go and you're kind of going with that vast market consensus you're not really putting up $200 loss, even though I just took a $200 loss on the last play, this is going to be setting up to be a more interesting play. And also because you're subsequently going the next day after earnings and it's not one day expiry, you're not going to take as much of a beating as you would if you were playing like, let's say Netflix on a Thursday earnings aftermarket for a Friday expiration, that theta and crunch would be massive. So with that one, we got to be a little bit more cautious. But again, this lets us play out, kind of take profit and looking to take only 50% of that profit if we see that it's a quick get in and grab. So hope you guys enjoyed this so you guys can know 152.50, 155 or 155, 150 playing for AMD, basically buying the 155 and then either selling the 152.50 or the 150 put on AMD. That will subsequently cap it for earnings. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern where we'll be going over Google and AMD. Check out if those plays worked out. And also I'll be throwing a Meta and Microsoft play out for Wednesday. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you know that. And also we have our weekend deep dive linked over here so you guys can check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.